to EU. Spanish Nomads are going to be the blue side on the right, on the red side of the screen, though, at the same time. That was a terrible introduction. I4 are going to be fighting from there. And on Spanish Nomads, we're going to see Angel94 playing Bastet. Meanwhile, the Watchy's going to get caught out on Scylla in the jungle early on, as Dirge just looks to defend the jungle. You know, with the recent changes to the Warriors, you should note that, I mean, Odin lost a lot. But what, what he didn't lose is his ability to do damage at level 3, that's for sure. Oh, that leap is still ridiculous. Is it still the highest 140. in the 140! Yeah, oh, it's, it's the highest, highest hitting uh, jump in the game at level 1. At level 1, right. So, we actually see Dirge just looking for the opportunity onto Bastet there. So, quick look over the teams again. Angel94 playing Bastet. Jock is going to be playing Kronos. Warchi on Scylla, the Godcar position. And Nika, who has gone for Geb. And on the other side of the map, DM, but we've got my four. It looks like the I4 guys are going to be playing Dirgius on that Odin. Advert's going to be grabbing the Nua. I Raffer playing Vamana. And Lloydy playing Janus. I'm calling him I Janus. Now, the interesting thing about knowing I4 a little bit more than I do with Spanish uh -oh. Nomads, they're all pretty much as expected. You know, w one of the things we hear a lot about from, you know, the 4v4 versus 5v5 debate is that 5v5 or 4v4, you know, the 5v5 is too, you know, 4v4 is too competitive. That there's, they like it 5v5 better because there's no meta. Even if you aren't familiar or the meta hasn't been created, there will always eventually be the best way to do things. And you can see that reflected right now as, you know, right here, Spanish Nomads are going to fall a little bit behind overall in terms of tickets because they, they just took too long to clear out the waves. But what, look what I4 did as well. They actually put, took one buff from the jungle, went to lane, pushed it hard, went back and picked up the blue buff as well. So they're still going to get the tickets. That blue on the left side is going to be a bit more delayed. But like you said, it's going to force them to lose tickets on that side. Yeah, this is that was a very strong opening from I5. Or I4. Did they change their clan tag? That would, yeah, oh, they have. look at the push there. He was able to go through the floor to get out of the... Uh, or, sorry, he pushed him through the floor, actually missed the, uh, the, the clear the path there. Very strong play, but I think the communication could have used a little bit of work. Had he started that clear the path half a second later, it could have been a big push for them. Still no first blood. Okay, good. So we're going to actually see Giannis for the first time in competitive play. Now he's unstable. Vortex is his big damage skill as you see it land on to oh, Geb there as well. Oh my god. Right lane, Angel used the bleed. Didn't hit any of his opponents. Oh, he Oh, Angel. Oh, the throws right there. He bled the minions only. Threw the cats out, and the cats turned to the minions. So the minions just died, and it was a wave clear, and immediately the re-engage from Dirge just comes out, and that's going to be a first blood for I4, as the pressure's on left side. Now, as Geb's trying to defend with no mana here, they're looking for the aggression, Look the unstable the vortex Janus connects! Damage. Oh my yep. god! I mean, that's you know, we, we talk Janus about... Has. You know, Janus, we talk about a lot how the character has a hard time confirming damage. Every other mage has a way to confirm damage without having to use their escape ability. Janus doesn't really have that, but at the same time, if he hits you, God help you. It's going to sting a little bit, what we're going to say. It will sting just a little as it connects with, especially if both sides of the Unstable Vortex connect in the middle as well. That's what you've got to look for. So keep an eye for him using the portal into the Unstable Vortex to confirm right. that damage. And just always keep an eye his ultimate, the through time and space, will allow him to quick transition the map with his whole team DM. All right, so now left side, more pressure coming out. It looks like we do have a lane swap here. Uh, Vamana's going to find himself in, in the position of Bastet, and we have a pause coming out. Uh, not sure how this one, how long this one's going to last, uh, or if there's any trouble at all. This might just be a, a quick meeting. Not really sure what we're looking for. Um, things to talk about build-wise. Advert going into Enchanted Ring. I'm not sure if this is going to be Demonic Grip or Telkines, uh, but she benefits greatly from both pickups. Yeah, what do you think about the shell being picked up on Irafa there on Vermont? I like shell. I think shell is one of the most underrated items in the entire game, or even actives. I mean, it's 45 protections plus a 15% damage reduction for 5 seconds. I mean, that is really incredible. And it's not just to you, it's also to your allies as right. well. So you're actually helping to firm your allies. And especially with someone, if you're landing with someone like Janus, who has those issues of mobility, then it will help him out when he has to tank the damage. So we're about three minutes deep so far. Unpause is coming out. And I-5, or rather I-4, has a pretty decent lead so far. Dirgy is having a kill on uh, Odin's definitely going to help the fact that his, you know, he's become a little bit weaker. Stun's going to hit oh, him monster. in the back. The combos. Spanish Nomads answer back. 
Coming back to fight, they are on the left hand side. You're going to see Bastet looking for aggression again, trying to leap in onto Janus, who has the cats on him as well. Now going to hit that threshold to try and speed himself up. The channel has been hit. It's going to connect, but not a lot of damage. Cataclysm comes out. Geb's trying to secure the kill. He does, you know. Geb and the cats pick up the kill. And now Rafu's turning to the giant baby, looking for the beatdowns. Going to confirm one kill back in trade. Angel needed two more seconds for that jump. Instead, he turned around, and I think made a misplay there using the last bit of his mana. That's going to turn into a double kill, and now they might be Hello. in some trouble here. Raffer is going to be seeing that Warchi has rotated over, and a nice Sentinel will put her in a position of defense. Yeah, he missed the crush though, so this tower's going to get attacked. Kronos rotating over, looking for the opportunity to try and defend this one. As Dirge is still going aggressive and keeping Scylla busy from being able to get involved on this. There we see Rafa teleporting in, using that portal as the tower goes down. And Rafa explodes! The damage from Unstable Vortex just made Kronos disappear! Yeah, I mean, Janice is doing a really good job. This is definitely a major shot here to Lloydie, who has so far been, I think, an incredible force. Now, of course, he does have one death, but the damage he has put forth so far has really put his teammates in the best position possible. And as we get into the four-minute mark, check out the jungle invade. Well, they're actually trying to jungle invade or possibly rotate behind Mika here. The Siege Towers here, they're actually looking for jungles. As you said, blue can't be taken away. They've worked out the speed, the timers on these buffs already, DM, and they're abusing that to take more tickets away. Really good play. You know, it was a little awkward for them. Oh, Bastet is going to jump over towards the red. Raffer actually almost got seen there, which could have been trouble with that amount of health and mana. Uh, right side is getting pushed. Aloyd is taking oh, some damage. Oh, the get a sprint out in time. I'm, I'm a monster destruction! Giannis a little bit low on the movement. As you see, Dirge is blinking, looking for the aggression pillars used actually on the Siege Towers. Dirge takes a lot of damage from the crush from Scylla, and now that Siege Tower is going to drop. All towers still standing, though, for I-4, so overall a net win is two towers down on the side of Spanish Nomads. Not to mention, they're also two kills ahead on the I-4 side. 1,800 oh, gold, 1,600 experience. We're going to make that three kills as Angel gets turned on as well. The slow's coming out, not getting the double proc. The Umbrella Ring uh, didn't quite get on the backside before she was able to pounce out. It was 6-3 to three now in favor of I-4. Four. It's really hard to keep saying I-4 because you're so used to calling I-5. And the thing about Giannis overall is he's really making an impact with the amount of damage he's doing. It's, it's shocking to a lot of people. I'm interested by the Spear of the Magus choice though, DM. I'm not sure whether that one is as good because of his cooldown. has been quite long. What do you feel? I think what he's thinking here is that uh, he's going to apply both hits with Unstable Vortex. But at that time, you've already done the damage. So again, I think I'm with you. Uh, I'm not really sure why he's opted to pick this up, but I mean, if he can get that extra damage off, it's going to be big. But now, they pick up the middle, they got the extra Siege minion, they can back here, continue pushing, and they're still, they still have a pretty decent lead in terms of ticket here. Uh, you just got to see some aggression. Yeah, they are in a commanding position now, so expect to see Vamana come through using that teleportation to allow him to get to the Siege Tower as they wait for the next Siege Tower to spawn as well, which will spawn slightly ahead of Spanish Nomads just because they stole some of those tickets from the jungle camps too. Left side, we're seeing some pressure. You see Angel and Jock moving up the left side, but oh, they're going to be forced to retreat here. Where is Nuwak going? Blinking from Dirge, Spears go down, and Warchi is in trouble, and a monster popped, as was the Cataclysm, but Dirge is going to escape for now, forcing two ultimates out. Oh, for he's not going to escape for side. long. We have an ult coming over on the right side. The pounce is going to miss. Cats are going to go out. The bleed will go out, but Angel's taking a lot of damage. Lloyd, he misses completely as Raff returns to fight. Angel's one hit. They find him in the back with the unstable Vortex and is now able to push forward in all the while. Nuwa is ready to push. Nuwa continuing to push left hand side down. Siege Tower just spawns as well on the left side as Rafa keeps them busy with Lloyd. Lloyd is looking to look for the damage to confirm, but the rewind comes off just in time to give him full health. But look at that tower damage on the left hand side already, DM. Nuwa is doing work. Yeah, I mean, that probably could have gone down if she used both flame strikes in the closest range possible, but she kind of moved up a little bit, or rather moved back a little bit too far and lost some damage. Clay minions inside. Raffer takes the crush, but gets a huge combo up. Flame Strike oh, gets the tower second. and Warchi. This is going to be a kill. Oh, maybe not. Sentinel does allow it to escape, and Raff is going to live for the time being as well, as another tower drops, and now everyone's going to recall from I-4 and look to siege up using the teleport with the siege tower. Wait to see when Vermana jumps through. He's waiting for his team. No, he's not. He's just going to go in, put the pressure onto Angel, forcing the pounce back as the rest of the team comes in. Dirges is there, Ring of Spears, and Kronos is caught. Kronos is gone. Three-man crush connects, though. 
Kronos is not having the showing that he had yesterday in North America. Get blinks in. Three-man Kata. He's going to take some unstable vortex damage. His crush goes off and hit two. They push the portal down. A lot of damage coming through. And another Sentinel safe. I'm a monster. Will he be able to get out? One shot in the ult from Lloydy in the back. Gets him. Lloydy picks up the kill. Rafa is going to go down in trade, but that was for a Phoenix. The jungle buffs are about to spawn, and it looks like I thought no this already. They're hunting the jungle, or at least it looks like they are, because Advert's going to find that blue buff again on the respawn timers. They already had it. Once again, another nine tickets taken away from Spanish Nomads. That's right, and they could really use that at this point. Either team is looking for tickets uh, for their siege engines. We saw uh, I-4s just get picked up, but look at the potential here. They're using the Nua push constantly. They're using the Janus ult for that global presence. Odin constantly getting the Ring of Spears off on the right people. I-4 is just in perfect form today. Yeah, they're, look, they're, they're learning the map very quickly and actually looking for the exploitationable points wherever possible. And that's why you're seeing picks like Yarnus being picked up by them, because they're going to look to use that to their advantage as well if it does get to that stage of the game where they need to get the back door option going for them. Now, the next Siege Tower to spawn, though, DM, will go in favor of Spanish Nomads. Which side would you prefer it to spawn on, though, is my uh, question. Uh, well, it's going to spawn on the right side, regardless <laughs> of what I say. Now, given the fact that there's a Tier 2 here, it could be strong. Realistically, they want to be on the side that has the fire minions so they can push up, but at the same time, those fire minions could help burn down those siege weapons very quickly. I don't think Spanish nomads could really say which way or the other, which side they would really prefer this to be on and have it be accurate, because realistically, they just need to push both lanes as fast as possible. Everyone's grouping on this right-hand side. Rafa's coming around the back to try and cut them off, and it looks like Spanish Nomads enforced away from their Siege Tower, and that's going to be the Siege Tower drops. The next one to spawn will definitely be I-4s, but look at this, the Silver Fury spawning, and it looks like I-4 are well aware of that. You know, this is real big trouble for characters like Bastet who can get in and get those steals. I mean, she just doesn't have a lot of damage at this point. You look at the gold right now, they're 4,800 of gold ahead, split over four people, not five like it would be in Conquest. So it winds up being a little bit stronger on top of the fact that they have a general level advantage one for one across the board. Oh, Nick is in trouble here. He's already used a rollout to try and engage the Ring of Spears. Goes down, jumps through, falls through Oi. the portal, and now the Clay Minion's doing work as well. That's going to be a pickup for Durgis for a free kill. Meanwhile, Rafa being busy on Angel. Pound spin force. It was a short pounce, and now Angel's in trouble. Going to jump back, but Giannis is waiting. Oh the connection of the unstable Vortex hits. Cats are popped oh. to down. He falls through the portal to doom, and that's going to be another kill for Lloydie. Lloydy is going to have an incredible presence next week when we allow Janice into the meta. I mean, <laughs> this guy has really showing potential. He takes some damage from I'm a monster. The goal, the sentinel for the aggression, but oh, it's not Mochi. enough. Time Rift's not going to be good as well, but Time Stop will find him. Will find him, so that's going to drop him down. But three members in the siege time are going to continue the assault. Left hand side, DM. There's two waves of fire minions oh, pouring no. in, and it's only Chrono standing. Deb's they back up soon, but Geb doesn't have any wave play. They can try to push here. Shockwave just doesn't do nearly enough damage. It's going to start taking a lot. He's going to rotate in and try to make this fight. Just make something happen here. But with the Siege Engine, with Nua, with the potential from damage from the Vimana, this Phoenix is not going to stand for much longer. Now, the melees have been picked up as Bastet respawns and cleans up the wave, but the damage has already been done. Damage has already been done as I-4 looking to push into the base and end the Siege Tower leading the way. Wrath is owning the minions out there, just spawned. There's the aggression oh from Durgis, he catches God. two in the ring. The pillar is there as well. The rewind's going to get him out, but what cost to Geb? Geb's going to drop before he can pop the cat. Lloydy makes it through the portal. No, it's still going through. Lloydy almost, actually, Lloydy explodes after going through the portal. He sprinted in there trying to make something happen. They get the Phoenix, but not much else. But two members, uh-oh. Sentinel's going to be used. Warchi looking for something. Finds himself in the middle of a flame strike. Gets stunned off, but he's not going to let them back for free. Iraffer is too low to back lazily. Advert low as well. Sikkim's going to be used, and it looks like she's going to stick around and just clean up the fire minions. But well, absolutely enough is going to come from this Warchi. They're still trying to lazy back here, Advert and Rafa. Why do you just go a bit further back? It'll be fine. Warchi can't get you then. Look at this, though. There's not a lot the Spanish Nomads can do, even though they nearly got a full team wipe there out of I-4, because that Siege Tower keeping them busy on the left-hand side. Watch the two men uh -oh. run through here. DM are going to have a fight. Look at the potential of damage. Angel super low already. If she jumps back, she's going to find himself in the wrong spot against Advert, who's actually letting it go. Dergius rotates in as well, and that's going to find a double right there. Actually, no, Geb keeps it alive. There's a ring. One's going to be in. Crush going to do some damage, and again, she will escape, but not for long. 
Raph is still trying to chase back the pounce back into death is what she just did then. No, she's oh still surviving as Anna Monster connects with Rafa on the backside of that. Phoenix drops again on the left hand side. Keb gets a good cataclysm off as Lloydie finally secures Angel and Keb's doing his best to time cup with the poles underneath his feet. The shield is on him. He's whacking against many. The unstable vortex connects and that is Lloydie with another kill for himself. Looks like I4 are going to win out here. Yeah, I don't really see Warchi being able to hold off four people. We're not at the 14 minute mark, but that Titan's taking serious damage. It's at 50%. Still, Scylla trying to move forward, looking for anything, but the damage coming out from the Flame Strike is too high. She falls through the portal. The Unstable Vortex damage will be enough. And